Are you ready to receive this morning what God has to say? Y'all come ready to receive the word of God this morning. I see some of you are ready. We got some new faces. Welcome everyone to the Hand of God Ministry. I'm senior pastor of this church, Pastor Jesse Diaz. We've been going for 13 years, and we're starting to see some growth. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. We're seeing a little something going on here at HGM. Amen. And I want to talk to you a little bit today. I'm going to give you the title of the message is Working is God's Will. You get excited a little bit. I'm let it set just a little bit. Working is God's will. I'll say it again. Working is God's will. When you go to work, you know that you're in God's perfect will. Young people, don't be afraid to go to work. Amen? Don't be afraid to get educated. Don't be afraid to get your hands dirty. Hallelujah. Parents, give your young folks, your young children, something to do at home. Let them do chores. Give them rewards. Let them know how the world works. So when they get out there, they're not disappointed. Amen? We got to know that it's God's will for Christians to work. Christians. Amen? Working is God's will. And I want to share something with you. I got to put y'all's uh, steel boot toes, boot steel toes, whatever you call them, steel boots on so you don't get your toes crushed today. Has anybody ever heard the word scrub? I'm going to get messy today as your pastor. I'm going to get all in the Kool-Aid. Hallelujah. Because nobody wants to work anymore. Are you hearing me, church? Nobody wants to work anymore. They want everything to be handed to them. I didn't grow up that way. The older generation surely didn't grow up that way. They know what it means to work. Hallelujah. I don't care what it is. So long as your hands are not idle. You're putting them to do something, whatever it, it might be, you're working with your hands. Amen. And you got to know as a believer, one who's been saved, one who understands the cross, the one who understands that Jesus died for our sins, amen? Even after you're saved, that means you got to get to work. How many knows Adam and Eve worked? And that was before the fall. Hallelujah. Amen. That means they were to tend what? The garden. They were in charge of tending and working and doing something. How many knows that we're created beings to work? Working is God's will. Let's get a hand clap there. Hey, man, that's a good hand clap right there. So I want to minister this morning to those who don't work and to those who do work. So everybody here is going to get something when it comes to working because right now people do not want to work and they want to have everything handed to them. So let me go back to this word scrub. Y'all thought I forgot, didn't I? Oh, he thought I forgot. No. Nope. I know it's a slang word, but I want you to listen to what the word scrub means according to the Urban Dictionary. Y'all know what the Urban Dictionary is, right? <laughs> so anyway, it's not part of our vocabulary, but I want you to hear what it means because you young people know what I'm talking about, right? Not going to quote the song, but just want you to hear. <laughs> oh, my gosh. It's going to get good today. We're going to have some fun today. Amen. The word scrub, according to the Urban Dictionary, means someone who mooches off everyone else and has nothing going on in their life. Do you still love me? Amen. Probably still lives with mama. Yeah, you're going to get real quiet in a minute, boy. I'm not talking about if you're 12 or 13. Hear me by the Holy Spirit. We're going to get into some things. Probably still lives with mama, doesn't have a car, a job. Or a plan. Doesn't want to do nothing. Proverbs 18.9 says, A lazy person is as bad as someone who destroys things. You hear that, church? So let's see what God's word says this morning about working. Y'all ready? Go with me to Proverbs chapter 6 and hold your place there. I'm not going to give you the verse so you don't start reading. Because I want to give you some things about Proverbs. I'll give you time to, to kind of get yourself there. Proverbs chapter 6.
Amen. There was times I was talking to a pastor this morning. It's just one of those messages that a pastor is called to preach. Like, wow, I would love to talk about blessings and miracles and healings today. Talk about the blood. Talk about Jesus Christ and all of these things. But it's those times that God will call the pastor to preach messages that make the congregation uncomfortable. I don't like to preach those, but I got to do what God calls me to do. Amen? Because I'm here to please God, not people. Otherwise, I'm in the wrong position. Amen? Which is most of our government. Hallelujah? I just thought I'd throw that in there for free. So I was talking to pastor this morning. There was times when I would go into the church that we started interning in and growing in, the church that we were attached where the Bible college was there and we went and got educated in the Word of God. There was times when I was going in there that I went into just to sit to have church before I even thought about having Bible college or getting into Bible college. I was coming from, a, from the world, coming from issues, coming from sin, a lifestyle of sinning, just doing my own thing, arrogant, full of pride, knowing everything, and no one knew nothing. That means I knew everything, but you don't know nothing. I had everything figured out. Amen? And when I got into that kind of ministry where there was a man of God who knew the word of God and began to preach and teach, it made me very uncomfortable. And I would get hit a lot of times. And it was almost like the message was zeroed and targeted just for me. Like the message zeroed me in. You ever feel like that when you come into this church? <laughs> it's not personal. I don't even know your business. But the Holy Ghost knows where you are and what you need to hear. Because the country's in trouble, church. And who are the ones that sustain this country? It's not the government. It's Christians. It's the church of the living God. We have to continue doing something while we're still in this life. Amen. We're in this world, but we're not of this world. And Proverbs is just one of those books, churches, that it's such it's it's filled with such wisdom. Amen. And King Solomon wrote the book of Proverbs from chapter one, probably all the way to chapter 28. And the last two chapters are written by some other author. Amen. Chapters one to nine were written to the young men in Israel's time, but can apply to all of us here and now. Hallelujah. Now, Proverbs, you may not find your salvation experience in the book of Proverbs, but it is known as a wisdom book that was written by King Solomon. And when God came to King Solomon, he asked King Solomon, what is the very thing that you want? What is the very thing that you ask from me that I can do for you? What did King Solomon say? He says, I want wisdom. Young people, young and old alike, this is the very thing you should be asking God for, especially right now, is wisdom. And when Solomon asked for wisdom, God said, I'm not only going to give you wisdom, whoo, but I'm going to give you fame and fortune as well, which he did. And the reason that King Solomon asked for wisdom is so that he can govern God's people properly, as well as govern himself in the eyes of God. Amen? So we need wisdom more than ever, church, so that we can conduct ourselves appropriately in the world. And this book right here is filled with, with life application that you can take and actually apply it to your life right now. Amen? And the book of Proverbs is laid out like that. Chapter 1 to chapter 9 is ministering to young people. Young people, hear me. If you want to grow in your relationship, you want to grow in life concerning finances, you want to know what God requires of you, this is where you need to be so that you can start applying things in your life right now. There's so many young people that are filled with knowledge but have no wisdom. Are you hearing me, church? You, that's why you go to the older person because wisdom, they've applied some things and they know what works and doesn't work. That's why you go to the elders. That's why you listen to your parents because they've been there already. And for young people, you're at that age, 17, 18, 19, even 13 now, or even 12, I say even 7 now, you know everything. We know nothing. And you start to understand that maybe they have a little bit of wisdom 
because they've applied some things in their life. They know the pitfalls of life. The book of Proverbs keeps us from the pitfalls of life so that we can go forth and prosper in this land. Can I get an amen? Don't worry about what the government's doing. We're God's people. Hallelujah. We still need to conduct ourselves in the earth. We still need to apply some things concerning God's word. And I want to talk to you today about some of those things. Are you with me? Working is God's will. I'll say it again. Working is God's will. Proverbs chapter 6, are we there? Can y'all guess where we're going to be going? I think we're going to start in verse 6. What does the heading say up there on chapter 6? It says lessons for what? So this is something you should be doing what? Daily. But here King Solomon is talking to the young people of Israel's time. And listen to verse 6. It says, take a lesson from the ants. I want you to see this now. Take a lesson from the ants, you lazy bones. Learn from their ways and become wise. Hallelujah. Here it is already, the, apo the apostle Paul. But King Solomon is addressing an issue here. The land had become so prosperous because of King Solomon. How many knows when you got a good leader, the country thrives? When you got a corrupt leader, the country suffers. But we're still in the land of Goshen. And you still got to do what you got to do in the earth so that you are blessed in the earth by following God's commands. And he saw the young people starting to become lazy and rely on what their parents were doing, relying on what was going on in the homes because they were so prosperous that the young people started staying home and doing nothing. He's saying, take a lesson from the ants to see how they work, to take a lesson from the most industrious insect in all of the world, which is the ant. As little as they are, they're the ones that work the most and work the hardest. Amen? Let's read it again. He says, take a lesson from the ants, you lazy bones. Learn from their ways and become wise. Listen to some of these Proverbs, church. I just want you to hear them. Lazy people, because he's talking about lazy bones. Lazy people irritate their employers. Like vinegar to the teeth or smoke in the eyes. <laughs> now hear me, church. Being lazy. For you that are management or HR does that proverb minister to you? Lazy people showing up late to the job. Amen? Leaving early. <laughs> Not asking, is there anything more I can do? It's like vinegar to the teeth. I used to love vinegar. My wife got me off vinegar. I, I got delivered from vinegar because my teeth were starting to disappear because it was eating all the enamel up. That's how much a lazy person is compared to vinegar. How the strain that takes place from them when they're in a job that doesn't want to do anything. Amen? It's gonna, I'm not going to get a lot of, I know I'm not going to get a lot of amens, okay? But I want, you to see, I want you to hear some of these things because at the end of this, you're going to understand where I'm, where I'm going. Amen? Listen to another one. Lazy people want much, but get little. But those who work hard will prosper. You hear that, church? Something about working here. There are four things on earth that are small but unusually wise, and the ant is one of them. Go to verse 7. Though they have no prince or governor or ruler to make them work, look at this, they labor hard all summer gathering food for the winter. Woo! I love that. How does that minister to us? How does that apply to us? King Solomon is addressing the young people that you need to start working while it's still summer. That's an illustration for your life, church. You young people, listen to me right now. Don't tune your pastor out. When you're young, take advantage because summer represents all the energy and all the vitality you have right now at this moment to do what you got to do as you're young. Y'all hear me? Because he says that winter's coming when you won't be able to work. That means you're going to get to an age where you won't be able to work. Hallelujah. <laughs> you got to take all the advantage you can while it's summer, while you're young, so that you can put forth for your future later. But young people don't think like that. They only 
live for the moment. They only live for how they feel at this very moment. Seven years old, you should start planning your retirement. No, I'm not saying that. <laughs> we'll make sure you're listening. <laughs> Nowadays, you got to remember the old. Remember the older generation, mom and dad. You start to really look at their their finances, and you start to see how they put aside. They didn't know how to put aside. They didn't get their retirement together. They don't have the insurances that were were putting forth or putting forth towards something for later so that they can retire. They didn't think that way. It was all work, work, work. Amen? We have enough education to understand that we need to invest, put aside, start to save, but that's the last thing on young people's minds. They feel they have all the time in the world to do what they need to do, but summer is now for you young people to start working and start thinking about the future. Can I get an amen? Working is God's will. Doesn't matter what you do. Young or old, you should be doing something. Because let me tell you, if you don't start when you're young, 18 becomes 30 and 30 becomes 40. And when you try to do it at 40, it's so much harder to start working. And by then, you're starting to save. You're starting to put aside something for your future. So when you retire at 40, it's a lot harder. You can do it by God's grace. But it gets that much harder because guess what? Winter is setting in. The bones are getting a little more tired. There's a little more aches and pains. You young people, listen to what your pastor is saying. I'm 48, amen? And it's a little harder to do things now that I'm 48. Can anybody understand what I'm saying? Amen. <laughs> you go all day long, 8 o'clock, you still got energy. Older people, 3 o'clock hits, you need the coffee. You need star, but you need something to get you keep going. Amen. That's why me and Pastor love being around young people full of energy. Oh, my gosh. Let some of that fall on me. Take advantage while it's summer. Start investing in something towards your future. Don't think about the good time only. Think about what you need to start putting forth towards your future. In my home, it was three things growing up. It was being educated. If you're going to stay at home, you're going to high school, you're going to college, you're doing something towards educating yourself. The second one was you're going to work. Either one, education or work. The third one, you're going into the military. <laughs> Those were my three options, church. And as growing up, I never saw my dad without a job. I never saw him home on the couch doing absolutely nothing just living off food stamps. I never saw my dad that way. Now you hear me by the Holy Ghost, you're coming against food stamps. Don't get socially crazy on me now, amen? <laughs> just, those things for our taxes, where they go, are for those who can't get out of the house. Are you hearing me? Handicapped, disabled, or for whatever. But for those who are taking advantage of that, I'm speaking to you this very moment. That stuff will go so far and the grace will lift and something will start going on inside because there's no grace for you to stay at home. God's saying you need to start getting to work. You need to start doing something. And young people do not want to work right now. Amen? We were at HEB. I'm walking through HEB. And I've never heard this before. And over the, uh, the intercom speaker, they start announcing that they have jobs available. We're hiring right now. Please come and apply. Here at HEB, even give you the starting pay, $13 an hour. And they're giving it all on the intercom while you're walking and, and, and shopping. We got full benefits. Just laying it out for you. Why? I went in, I, I've been asking questions because nobody wants to work. They're hurting for employment right now. The employees don't want to work right now. We walked to, to, into a churches. After last Sunday, we went to churches. I like fried chicken. Oh, come on now. You ain't a real Christian if you don't like fried chicken. Come on now. Texas boy like fried chicken. Hallelujah. Church is good too. Get the squeeze and the oil and the grease comes out. Boy, that's just it right there. We only do it once a week though. Monday through Sunday. Everything in moderation. Everything in moderation. That's the Christian's life. We walked in there. There was two people in there. And the line was packed. And they were moving, boy. I looked in. I said, where are all the employees at? And I asked the manager, where are your workers? Y'all only ones two. Y'all only two here. He looked at me, Hispanic. Nobody want to work. 
Nobody went to work. And everybody at home. They're collecting money at home. Nobody wants to work. That's, what he, that's exactly how he said it. He said they don't want to work. They don't want to come to work. I said, what's the reason why? He says, because of the pandemic. He says, I know they're using that for excuse. <laughs> come on. You know what? The world can act crazy. True. I'm talking to the, I'm talking about Holy Ghost filled believer of God. Filled with faith and not worried about what's going on in the world. Amen. Representative of the Lord Jesus Christ and what you do. Whatever you do, put your hands to something. Amen. The Bible says whatever you put your hands to show what? Prosper for his kingdom. So you can have something to give to the kingdom of God. So that you can be beneficial not only as a citizen, a productive citizen, but also somebody doing something in the kingdom of God. You'll be a productive believer. Amen. So summertime is so important to start working and planning for your future. Even though I saw my dad work as a young man growing up, I didn't have the work ethic that I was needed until I got saved. Amen. You need the Holy Spirit and you need the help of God to get that in you. Because when you're saved, something happens. You're a new creature now in Christ Jesus. Old things, the old man has passed away. Something starts stirring in you. I got delivered from drugs. I got delivered from alcohol. I got delivered from pornography. All those things started to slip away, and my mind got clear. And all of a sudden, life started hitting me. And I said, I got to get to work. I got to start doing something, amen? I can't tell you how many jobs I had because we'd be here all day. That's not good, church. Amen. Let's get, I'm going to give you my whole message. Let me just, let's get some word in here. What does verse 8 say? They what? They labor easy. They labor sometimes. They labor when they feel like it. They labor when the, when the conditions and the stars and everything is lined up perfect. Then I'll go to work. You ever seen the compadres out there? Sometimes they're out there in the rain, raking and cleaning up. Why well, think they're taking all the jobs? Because Americans don't want to do nothing no more. And then you're complaining. No, 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 no. I could go, I could go there. It's labor hard, you know that. We had that instilled in us. Where do you learn that from, church? You learn that from home. You know, it's good. I know parents, they want to, Sometimes make up for how their parents raised them. And sometimes you don't give them the structure and the direction they need because perhaps maybe your parents did it the wrong way. They did the best they could. Amen. Or maybe you're a single parent making up for the one that's not there. And so you give them a little more than they should receive. Amen. And don't give them the structure that they need. But I, didn't ha I, I had what was needed at an early age. Train up a child and they won't. Depart from the path when they're older. You're training up that child to learn how to work with their hands, whatever the case may be in your home. Have them do something. Have them take out the garbage. Have them clean up their room. Give them rewards just like they were working in the world. Let them know how this world system works. We're in the world, but we're not of the world. Amen? But everything we do, we do unto the Lord. But you have to teach them at an early age. And we learn how to go out there and... And, and, and work in the yard and, and labor in the yard. That's why I don't do it anymore. <laughs> Let me, I'll give you a quick, test, quick testimony how much God loves me. Okay? We're looking for a house, you know, to, to live. And we, we search so many places to live. And we finally wound up in, in Sugar Land, in, in, in subdivision area. And we got there, we didn't know that this was the case when we got there. We got there, and God knows my heart. He, does, he knows I don't like working in the yard. I don't like working in the yard. I don't. Very fragile. Skin's very fragile. <laughs> I'm not afraid of work, church, but put me inside somewhere, and I'll go to work all day long. Can I stand working outside? And God knows that. He knows my heart. He'll work with you, amen? He'll give you what fits your temperament. How many know that? He'll give you something, because everyone has a gift in here to do something, church. 
I don't care if it's there sacking groceries. You got the light of the gospel all over you, and you're sacking them groceries like you don't like nobody's business. Hi, how are you? My name's Dave. Hallelujah. Sharing something, right? You got to be somewhere doing something. So we got to the house and come to find out that it's perpetual care on the lawn. That means the city comes out and does the yard for us. <laughs> so I don't have to go out there and do any cutting of the grass. My whole point in saying is you got to build something up in that young person so they understand what it means to work. Idle hands make good use for the devil's workshop. When you're idle, your mind becomes idle. You hear me, church? And the devil will come in and start to tempt you because you're not doing anything. It humbles the soul to work. And let me tell you, when you come home, do y'all know what I'm talking about? You come home from a day's work, no matter what you're doing, and you have this fulfillment knowing you've taken care of your family and you're in God's perfect will in what you're doing. And there's something fulfilling about a man or a woman working when they come home, young or old. Hallelujah. Working is God's will. I'll say it again. Working is God's will. Verse 8, they labor hard all summer. Gathering food for the winter. Hallelujah. Because winter's coming. Verse 9, but you lazy bones. Hallelujah. King James says sluggard. Almost The illustration is almost to a slug that doesn't want to do anything. Always making excuses. There's a, you ever heard the proverb that says, well, I can't work because there's a lion outside. And a lion may eat, may eat me. Always making excuses and always chasing fantasies. That's what the book of Proverbs says. Every excuse comes to the person who doesn't want to work. If you're a stay-at-home mom and you take care of your kids, praise God, that's hard work right there. <laughs> that is a labor all by itself. I thank God for the stay-at-home parents that are still staying home and are still taking care of and raising the family. Nowadays, it could be either one. Amen? But you lazy bones, how long will you sleep? It's a question, babe. There's a question on here, babe. I want to talk to my pastor. I love you. But you lazy bones, how long will you sleep? When will you wake up? Two things there. How long and when? How long are you going to continue to be in slumber? How long are you going to sleep away the opportunity that's right before you? Amen? Lazy people love to sleep. You call them, they're asleep. You call them at 11 o'clock, they're still asleep. You call them at 1 o'clock, they're still asleep. But you don't have a job. Well, I'm waiting on God. He's going to give it to me. But you haven't put no resumes. You're not doing anything. But God's going to give it to me. There's a working relationship when it comes to being in covenant with God. That means you got to do something, the child of God. Amen? you got to put your hands to something. They're getting quiet in here. I told you we're going to get a lot of amens, but that's okay. It's saying, when will you wake up? When will you wake up out of that sleep? Verse 10. A little extra sleep, a little more slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest, then poverty will pounce on you like a bandit. Stop there. This is the result of sowing and reaping. I told you earlier, young people, start investing in something now concerning work, concerning education. Whatever you're going to do, you do it now. Don't wait till you're 30 and start thinking about what you're going to do for the future. Don't start a little extra sleep Oh, you know what? A little extra sleep says, I'll do it tomorrow. Tomorrow never comes. Today is the day of salvation, church, and it's high time that the church starts acting like a church. It's good to work. Everybody, I want you to say it. It's good to work. And you say it with such conviction, amen, that it's good to work. He says a little more sleep. What it means, I'm just going to roll right back over. A little more slumber. Ah, you know what? I'm good here. I'm taken care of. Mom and dad's got it. I don't have to do much. They're never going to cast me aside. The door will never be closed. 
Let me tell you something. That house is not your house. It's your parents' house. Amen? We talked about scrub earlier. You don't want to be 35 and 40 years old trying to bring the girlfriend that you're courting over to mom and dad's house. Boy, that's just not getting no kind of response, huh? <laughs> we have a lot of... P- <laughs> you young women in Christ, don't be dating or courting no scrub. <laughs> a lot of single people here, amen? Interested in a young man to court, you always make sure they're first what? Saved. Make sure... They're saved, make sure they're filled with the Holy Ghost, make sure that if you belong to this church, that man wants to come to this church. Amen? I follow pastor, I was in another church. I wanted to court Pastor Lisa, I went to the church where she was and I got blessed. Amen? Look, I wasn't no scrub though. But I didn't have good work ethics until I got married. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. She helped me to grow up a little bit. A wife, a man who finds a wife finds a good thing and obtain a favor from the Lord. She is the helpmate in the relationship. She will help the man come along in what God has called him to do. Help him to mature. How many know women mature faster than men? Amen. Hallelujah. I'll give you another story. First got married. No good work ethic. That stuff had to be put into me by the Holy Ghost. Amen. You got some areas that you feel you need some work. You need some help in some areas. The Holy Spirit will help you and strengthen you and give you the desire because it's God's will for you to work. Working is God's will. But I was just so in that place where I didn't want to work. I hated working. I didn't like going to work. I didn't like clocking into work. I didn't like being there at work. Amen? I wanted nothing to do with working. I wanted to be taken care of all the time. And there was nothing absolutely wrong with me. Amen? So one day I got out of my, you know, we're both working. She's working, visible changes, manager. And I'm working at this place, uh, Sherion, where it's call center. And every job I put my hands to, I would go really fast. I would climb the ladder really fast because that's the gifting that God had in my life. The favor of God was on my life. I didn't even know it. Sometimes when you go to a job where you're the cat, oh, I'm only going to start $13 an hour. Just do something and watch what God will do. He'll open the door so fast, church. He'll start to increase things in your life really quick because you're in God's perfect will. You're a child of God. He wants to bless you. He desires to bless you. Well, I just decided to call in sick that day without telling my wife, you don't do that, husbands. Because I wanted to stay home, watch TV, and just veg out all day because I was just feeling the laziness. You don't. Church, you got to go to work every day. You got to get up and go to work no matter how you feel. Amen. It's It's not the all in all. Hallelujah. This is the all in all right here. This is why we do what we do. Amen. So I was at, I'm going to go to the video store when they had the video store. Blockbuster was still existing. I went to Blockbuster and I was so excited and give me a few movies, go home and just, well, she decided to follow me that day. <laughs> she felt something. Like, wives, you Holy Ghost feel wise. Don't worry about your husband. If he's doing something he shouldn't be doing, all you got to do is pray. God will give you that little something. Something's off in my house. Something is definitely off. Y'all think we get saved, that we come all ready to go, and we're just stamped, ready, sealed, delivered. How many knows salvation experience is just the beginning when you come to know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? The Holy Ghost then begins to clean up your life. But we try to clean up our lives and then say we're going to serve the Lord. That's backwards. It don't work that way. You first give your life to Christ, then he sets up residence in your body, and then he goes to work on you. Hallelujah. He's the one that had to clean me up. Well, I'm over there, boy, I'm walking through. I got my popcorn. I got my my jujus, and I'm putting them up there, and 
I'm just going to have my Coke there. And boy, I just, I'm living in fantasy world here. And I have my movies, two movies coming out. And I come out of block. She remembers. I come out of Blockbuster, and there she is with the window down, just looking at me. <laughs> Boy, it was. I never want to feel that again, <laughs> ever again in my entire life. I felt like God was right in front of me, and the conviction. I can't even tell you the conviction. It was a crushing blow to see her. What are you doing? Oh my. Oh, what am I supposed to say? There's no excuse <laughs> that I could give her that would solidify me being there. <laughs> Amen? Called in sick. Look, I say all that to say is that when I got saved, I wasn't all I could be for the Lord. None of us are. Amen? You stay attached to the vine and God starts working some things in you. He will give you a willing and obedient spirit so that you can eat the good of the land. When you put your hands to something... You'll start to prosper. The man who works hard shall end up prospering. You have to labor somewhere, church. Young people, if you're not laboring you're not, and you're at home, hey, go to school. Get educated in whatever you want to do. When you're working at home, you better be helping your family out when you're working. When you bring a paycheck in, young people, and you're still at home, that paycheck is not all yours. You need to get that out of your mind. You go up to mom and dad and say, what can I do for you? Is there anything you need help with? Mm. I felt that one. I felt that one. Well, how do, how do you know all that, Pastor? Because that's the way I acted. <laughs> this is mine. I made this paycheck. But you got food in the fridge. Where do you think that came from? It came from dad and mom. I got a roof over my head. I got clothes on my back. I didn't pay for any of that. See how spoiled we are? And even when we get our paycheck, that's mine too. You don't even think about others. Working is God's will. I'll say it again. Working is God's will. I told you I was going to get up all in the Kool-Aid today. That's too much. Amen? I want to keep you from verse 11, church. God wants to keep you from verse 11. Then poverty. It didn't say may, po may be poverty will come or it might come into your life. Then poverty will pounce on you like a bandit. Scarcity will attack you like an armed robber. That means it's going to show up in your life. It's not a maybe or an if. You young people, you got to hear me by the Holy Spirit. You older people, you gotten a little further on in life. You understand now, even at the age of 40, if you got to pick up and start working and doing something, do it now. God can work where you are, meet where you are. Are you hearing me, church? It's never too late when you're in the kingdom of God. Amen. But we got to do something. Never get to a place where you feel like I, I might as well give up. I'm too old to do this. I can't do anything. God can step in and do anything supernaturally if you put your faith in the Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen? You want one more? Go to verse 20. Go to chapter 27, verse 18. I got like six uh, places to go to, but I'm not going to drown you out today. I'll say as much as the Holy Ghost will let me, and if we got to do a part two, we'll do a part two, but I think we'll be able to finish up a little bit. <clears throat> Chapter 27, verse 18, I love this scripture because I want to take a little time just to minister to the worker now. I think you got enough understanding of what King Solomon was doing by addressing the young people, and I address the young people of our congregation because we're having an epidemic, a pandemic happening when it comes to work. And the government is up to something, church. And I've warned y'all before already in here, as being the pastor and the prophet of the church, that what they're doing is they're creating where they can make it so comfortable, people being at home and supplying from the government, that you're not working, you get used to that kind of lifestyle. So when the government starts making its demands, guess what? You have to obey. That's not the way... God has designed this thing. The world is going to continue down in the downward spiral it is. It's not going to get better. It's not going to somehow be we are the world. Amen? Jesus said, I didn't come to bring peace to the earth. I came to bring a sword. Mm, hallelujah. Our peace will come later. We have peace now, but it's a peace that's internal. Your peace isn't based on what's going on on your circumstances in life right now. 
It's a peace that surpasses all your understanding, knowing who you are and who you are his. Amen? Did I say that right? Yeah. You belong to the master. For you who work. For those nasty bosses you have. And not everybody, <laughs> hey, look, church, get it out of your head that you want to work in a Christian environment. <laughs> we come to church for that. Amen? This is our Christian environment. This is where our family of God is. We've been in some of those Christian bookstores when they were still open, had some of the nastiest employees I've ever encountered. <laughs> and they were Christians. Full of just devils, religion. Amen? Religion stinks in the nostrils of God. We're talking about a relationship with the Father through our Lord Jesus Christ. Not religion. You ready for verse 18? As workers, oh, we give praise and thanks for the workers who tend a fig tree. Look, you're not tending a fig tree, but listen. Are allowed to eat the fruit. So workers who protect their employer's interest will be rewarded. Woo, I love that. What does that mean? That means you as a worker, you're coming into your workplace. You're treating that fig tree like it belongs to you. Are you hearing me? Wherever you put your feet, even though it's owned by someone else, even though you're not the owner of the company, you're walking into this company like it belongs to you and you're taking care of it because you're doing it onto the Lord. And when God sees that kind of attitude, no matter how the boss is acting, no matter how harsh she is, amen, you don't work for that boss. We don't have the understanding yet. The revelation hasn't dropped in our spirit that we're not working for that boss. He's not the one that promotes me. It's God who promotes me. Woo! Come on now. And my reward comes from the Lord. And every time I come in there, I'm protecting his interest. I'm protecting his reputation. I'm not taking out some, something I heard at the water cooler and going and taking and passing it on as good gossip. I'm protecting everything there and I'm going to let my light shine and protect the reputation of that company that I'm at. Are you hearing me, church? And I'll do whatever's required of me, but not violating my conscious mind. That means I'll do whatever they're asking me, but I'm not going to walk contrary to the word of God. Amen? Working is God's will. Let's do one more, and we'll close it up. Ephesians chapter 6. Y'all enjoying this this morning? Some of y'all are going to get online tomorrow. I'm getting a job. I'm going to get a job. I'm not talking about if you're at home and you're disabled and you can't work or something mentally or something's happened to you. or But you want, let me tell you something, church. We've seen, Pastor and I, reality shows where even Down syndrome Adults out there working and living on their own and conducting themselves in a relationship. So you better be honest where you are in your own heart. Amen? Because mommy and daddy will go on to be with the Lord. Then what do you got? I hope you all come back next week. It's a hard message. It is. I can tell because it, it hits everything where you are as far as your lifestyle. Because if you don't work, guess what? You'll scheme and you'll scam. And you'll be out there like the uh, scrub. He may not be working, but he's hustling now. He might be doing some stuff on the side. Because he's going to get money from somewhere, and it may not be the right way. So you've got to work the right way onto the Lord. Amen? It still has to be, the work still has to be pleasing in God's eyes. Amen? Well, I work, I hustle, I sell drugs, and I do, you know, hey, I'm over there, and I, no, 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 no. That's not pleasing, amen? Got to be the right kind of work so you feel good about what you're doing. Are we there? Verse 5, it says, slaves, employees, obey your earthly masters with deep respect and fear. Serve them what? Sincerely, as you would serve Christ. Do you see that? This is referring, I know it says slaves and masters, but you can apply this to your employee-employer relationship as you're serving them. You've got to remember, you're serving the ultimate one who is your master, the Lord Jesus Christ. No matter what environment you're in, church, 
Try to please them all the time, not just when they are watching. I'll say it again. Try to please them all the time, not just when they're watching you. I'm already at 45 minutes. We may have to get to the worker next week, but I want you to hear something. You don't want to just do what's the best that's required of you just because the boss is in the room or because management is in the room. Christians don't operate like that. We have a spirit of excellence, amen? We walk with integrity. And even when the boss isn't there, our boss upstairs is watching. God is keeping a good set of books, and he's watching everything you do when you're putting your hands to the plow. Amen? That means that you don't do your best just because who, whoever's in the room, you start to adjust and you start to act right and you start to straighten up. Amen? Kids, take what I'm saying. You don't do that just because your parents are there or because there is an adult figure there. You do those things that are the utmost even when they're not there. Amen? God sees everything. Hallelujah. Working is God's will. Working is God's will. Let's finish it with verse 7. Work with what? I'll let everybody say this one because this is a big one. <laughs> Work with what? Let's say enthusiasm again. Yeah. Let's say it one more time. Enthusiasm. Yeah. It's, it's funny. I said, in, I said, let's say enthusiasm. 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 That's the way we go to work. Oh, I got to love it. I know sometimes it gets oppressive, especially now. All the mask wearing and the mandates coming out, vaccines, all this stuff is hitting you. Well, do I do it or do I not do it? I, as a possibility, I may lose my job. It gets very oppressive, and I understand that. God understands that, but he will keep you in all your ways. He will lead you in the direction you need to be led as you're more sensitive to the Holy Ghost. Amen? So work with enthusiasm. As though you were working for the man. It says working for the Lord rather than people. Close your Bibles. Working is God's will, church. Working is God's will. I can't say it enough. Working is God's will. As you go to work, you have to have the right attitude. No matter where God has you right now. It doesn't matter if you're a cashier it doesn't matter if you're a bagger. It doesn't matter if you're a roofer. It doesn't matter if you're landscaping. It doesn't matter if you're on the back of a garbage truck. Amen? Hey, those guys make good money. <laughs> Amen? It used to be where they were frowned on. Boy, it's hard to get those city jobs now. Can I get an amen? We respect the workers, and we respect those who work because it's the middle class that keeps this country going. It's not the wealthy. They're the ones draining it. Hallelujah. So get rid of the middleman, and we can control everything in our country. That won't happen until we're out of here, church, until the rapture of the church. But we're still in this world, and we have to conduct ourselves still in this world. So you have to understand, working is God's will. Every time you get up, every time you put your, your, your outfit on, you're brushing your teeth, and you're combing your hair, get excited, have some enthusiasm. Get excited knowing that you're in God's perfect will, don't let the circumstances at your workplace dictate how you're supposed to feel when you get there. Because I know it's very oppressive right now. That's why we come to church. Let's stand. Come on, give me.